You are watching a master at work. In this video, we take a long, hard look at the Creality Ender 5S1. Discover what's missing from this beaten up old box, format an SD card, and find out if Creality's latest Ender 5 cuts the mustard. Let's get straight on into this one. Last year, Creality once again continued the trend of upgrading their popular range of 3D printers. Inside of that ecosystem is the Ender 3, 5 and derivatives of Pro and Neo versions. These, in short, make the cut for popular nods to upgraded parts such as Creality's Sprite Extruder which heats up to 300 degrees, PEI sheets and also PC plates. And of course clipperizing all of these with the Sonic Pad. So when Creality contacted me last year they said they wanted to send me their complete range of printers. So far I've had the Sonic Pad and one of the Ender Freeze. And of course I've made content on those, those could be found in the description below. The Ender 5 arrived a couple of months ago but the box unfortunately looked like it had been kicked down the street. And of course from previous experience if they do turn up in that condition they tend not to work out too well. So I reached out to my contact at Creality and I've not heard a single thing. In fact it's been radio silence for some time now which is kind of worrying. Um, but we got into it anyway. Check this out. With a build volume of 220 by 220 by 280 millimeters, it fits in quite well with other similar 3D printers that are popular currently on the marketplace. However, during that unboxing, I discovered that there were a couple of things missing from the box, including the user manual. So not only have I not been sent a user manual, I can also not find one on the Creality website. Again, if I do find it, I will link it below. Maybe it's just, I don't know, you think if you go into Creality and then manuals, then it will be in manuals. In fact, what's happening instead, it's downloading a load of bin files and other bits and pieces, which is probably to flash this uh, for whatever reason. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use some common sense. So bear with me. As I've been around 3D printing for a little while now, I was able to successfully assemble the printer without too much trouble. So you have your base, you have four uprights, and then the top and back screw effortlessly together. I do usually like to check the manual just in case there's something new that I might have missed on the assembly. Usually the manual will be present also on the SD card along with the website. But as I took a deep dive into this, in fact, there's very little information given and even the firmware files seem to be a complete mess with no release information about what the actual fixes are. So I'd certainly say that that looks about right so far. Obviously with no user manual, it's um, difficult to know, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that's the um, framework basically built. Uh, there's now going to be a part that I believe is going to go on the back and then obviously the bed is then going to attach to that. I don't know if I put the bed on first because again we've got no user manual but uh, I'm going to have a look at the photos and see what I can ascertain from that. The build actually isn't that complicated but I usually like to take these review printers from the stance of a new user and personally from what I've seen so far it wouldn't be worth my time to have a high risk of failure on my first 3D printer. We have power, we have a display so, so far from Creality, we have a beaten up old box, we have no SD card, no user manual inside of the box, no user manual online. I sort of feel like I've been let down. But I'll tell you who won't let you down, the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay.com. If you're in the market to bring your project to reality, PCBWay.com could very well be the key to your overall success. PCB manufacturing, of course, is not their only talent. CNC, 3D printing, and fabrication are key elements to their business. Projects such as Myrtle the Mermaid by UK maker Mad Lab could also be brought to life thanks to PCBWay.com. Check them out, PCBWay.com. So as we move forward into the first few prints using Cura, of course, Cura right now, as of making this video, doesn't actually have a... Uh, a profile for this 3D printer which is a bit of a shame but I sliced some stuff and I left these prints to go overnight. I think it's important to mention that the first layer on each of these prints went down really really nicely and it led me to believe that actually it was probably Cura and my programming that was actually leading to some of these issues but sequentially what was happening on the test prints is along the layers of two, three, four, five, and 6 it started to give this weird deviation. So in the end, I took it to Twitter to see if any of my Twitter buddies had similar situations. And the results were kind of interesting. People were talking about airflow, heat, and speed. And I changed all those things in Cura and tried more test prints, only to find out the situation was still the same along those layer lines. For whatever reason, it was oozing out. It was almost like it was a compression, but it ended up being firmware. So I headed back over to the Creality website and downloaded the new firmware version 1.0.6. However, the release notes are simply not there. It doesn't tell me what it's fixing or potentially breaking. And in fact, the firmware does fix the print. However, it does not fix 
the auto bed leveling. In fact, it causes another issue, probe fail error. To me, it seems like they really wanted to get this printer out, get all the stuff set up, and then just move on to something else. Things are not finished. Things are not tested. Firmware is not committed. What do you do with that? Well, it turns out that the manual bed leveling does still work. So let's get on with our first couple of decent test prints. So we've just finished a 24 hour print and I've got to say this particular model is phenomenal. It looks amazing and actually the printer's done a pretty good job at that but it has taken 24 hours. So we're probably printing around about 80 millimeters per second, not the 250 that this machine says it can do. I think overall with the firmware issues, Creality really need to pull their finger out and get this stuff sorted. So in closing, Creality's End of 5S1 has been a bit of a failure, if I'm being completely honest with you. And it's not necessarily down to the design or anything like that. It's more to do with the laziness and the complacency that Creality have basically bestowed on this bloody thing. It's such a shame that the firmware isn't up to scratch. They haven't released all the information that they should have done. Creality, what are you playing at? You're going to be losing the battle here in the 3D printing market space. I know there's going to be people out there categorically that are going to say, hey, you know what? I've got one of these and it's absolutely perfect. And if you've got a decent one, fair play to you. I thank you very much once again for watching the video, guys. Make sure you hit that comments up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.